I work at as a project manager at VS and we make WordPress products. So what is ACI or human computer interaction basically? So I know you guys had really some awesome sessions and it's kind of at the last time and you might be feeling dizzy or sleepy. Uh, give me 10 minutes and I will just finish it up in 10 to 12 minutes I hope. So what is ACI? ACI is a, uh, has been around for the late, in the late 80s, from the late 80s and it basically means human computer interaction. ACI basically works with these three aspects of like computer science, cognitive psychology and finance and design. So basically when we are coding or when you are designing or when you are using with psychology or working with psychology, we do not combine these three stuff all together. Because when a programmer is programming, he is not thinking about the other two concepts like psychology or finance and design. But when a designer is designing, he doesn't really care about the other two aspects. So ACI is a concept that actually integrates with these three components. So by using ACI or human computer interaction, you can actually make better products. So before going how we can use ACI to make better products, let's I want to show you how you can make better products, but let's see well, there are some bad designs around us. I will be showing both digital and physical product that we really encounter every day. So bad designs, whether it is hardware or software, provide the same cognitive response for our brain. So whether it is a bad chair or bad uh, door or bad shower you are uh, uh, using day to day, or it is a hard software that you find tough to use, they all provide the same unique cognitive response. So we can actually compare products whether it is physical or digital using the basic concept of ACI. So who here has not ever been confused with a push-pull door? Is there anyone who never been get confused about a push-pull door? Anyone? I know, they are, they are, they are, you have to, because these rules are confusing. So, we, what we think? That this door is, uh, I, I was not supposed to pull it this way or this way. It's my fault. But think about this, that when you are making a mistake again, again and again, so it's not your fault actually. It's the design fault that they failed to make a product that you intuitively use. Because you will learn someday to use the signs or read the signs, whether it is a push or pull, but trial and error will never make it as intuitive as it should be. So trial and error is not a good practice to make better products. So I will show you a, a few bad designs. Uh, this is the cafe, right? You can pour tea upon this cafe. But Will you use it? Any answers? Will you use it? I guess no, because it will make your usability less. It will not make you more productive because it has design issues. So this product and this product has same design failure, but we are getting accustomed to this but not this, because we are not realizing that we have a very superior Ketley design. We have a very superior Ketley design that we never realized that it is so good. The definition of good products is you will never recognize this is a, this is a good product. So this is a sign. This says zoom this way and this way. But the problem is the sign you can call it both vertically and horizontally and it can make you confused. So there are thousands of bad product designs around us and we are getting accustomed to it but 
we have trained ourselves to use these bad products whether they should have improved their designs. So this is a classic example of USB. So when we are using the connector, we fail two times. So that is why USB-C is gaining popularity. So USB 2.0 has more than 60% failure rates for the first time. Why? Simple. It's a bad product design. So this is Don Norman. He pioneered the concept of HPI in 1980s and we worked for companies like Apple and HP. So he gave his, uh, his work and the subsequent work gave us basically five design principles which we can maximize to use better, to make better products for everyone that humans love to enjoy. When you are making a product, whether it is a website, app or anything, you have to think like your user because more than 50% products fail in the long run because it is thought from business perspective rather than the user perspective. So when you are making something, you have to think like user. Otherwise, there is a very high probability, more than 50%, that your product product not fail. So we have five design principles. Let's see. So affordance. What is affordance? Affordance actually tells you what to do. Uh, this morning you always you all came here in numbers and came here and basically sit in the chairs. But has anyone told you you should have sit in the chair? I don't know. Because we have trained ourselves from the very beginning well as a kid that chairs are made to sit. So chair has an affordance and that affordance is sitting. So when products will tell you basically what to do, that is called affordance. So a chair has a good affordance because you don't have to think what it does. You already know what it does. The product is speaking to you without knowing, without you knowing, without you noticing. So uh, this is a button, right? Who thinks this is a button? Raise your hands. Okay, no one thinks that this is a button. But when you wrap around a padding, this becomes a button. This is how you can create a product. You can tell something that what it does. So that, that was the first principle, a product. So I got this screenshot from Apple's website. I saw the heading that how they are trying to give an example of iPhone privacy. So look at the heading and you can notice that they have deliberately cut off some lines. So what they are trying to do, they are creating an affordance to directly speaking to you without even realizing you, yourself. You don't even realize that what this particular section does. So they are speaking invisibly. So the next thing is feedback. What is feedback? Many of you mobile phones and when the ring comes, there is a ringing. This is a feedback. The mobile vibrates. This is a feedback. You click the chrome button and press enter. The bar loads, spinning and spinning, sometimes fast. This is a feedback. So when you are making a product, feedback is very important. Feedback can be many things, sound change, vibration change, color change, depth change and more. Think about this. When you are hovering a button, you move the cursor to that, there are many interactions. The color changes or there is an arrow moving from right to left, left to right and they are somehow speaking to you. So that is feedback and feedback is very important because uh, for example, this thing might uh, talk and this microphone doesn't provide proper sound, you will get the feedback and you will be complaining. So without proper feedback, it is very hard to make it successful products. So, how many of you have you used Windows XP? Okay. So, have you ever feel, felt lagginess or slowness while using Windows XP? Most probably, yes. Yeah, because at that time, in 2007 or 8, we wanted to do so much more, but the RAM was limited. We tried to do it, we're trying to do so much things, but RAM couldn't, or the processor couldn't provide that much fast feedback. So slower feedback and 
and we are getting frustrated. So slower feedback but harm your product in many ways. But not only there are some cases where slower feedback works. The next thing is visibility. So what is visibility? Uh, the very simple definition of visibility is not providing too much information at one go. For example, this is Google website. Google has thousands of products. They can put ads here or give some news here and they actually did. Back in the days they have some new stuff and some other stuff going on the home page but they slowly phase those away. Why? Because what think about concept and what Google does? Their main concept is search. So why would someone provide more things to crack the things out and make your a good user experience, take your good user experience away? So Google's homepage is a neat and clean design that just does one thing, search. So this is a good example of visibility. Okay, the next thing is bad visibility. When you have, uh, I know uh, if you haven't faced this kind of scenario, but there are some links where there's too much information choose the buttons which you want to use. So this is a bad visibility, bad example of visibility. And this is a good example of visibility. Google has thousands of pages in one search. And you can probably look in the top right corner that says this is the first page of 2.3 million pages. But in the bottom, have you ever thought that Google has put so much O, Google brand line guideline, Google's logo guideline doesn't allow this. But why they have put so much O in this area? Because they are talking to you through their design. This much O is silently telling you there are more pages. So they are, they are not listing 30 to 50 pages here. They have given a simple way to know, to let you know that there are more pages. So this is a good example of this video. So, the next principle is constraints. Constraints, what is constraint? That giving user a boundary that they cannot perform certain type of thing. For example, there is a door over there. If you lock the door from inside, will outsiders will be able to come here? You enter the premises? No. So by locking the door, we are creating a constraint. So how can constraints apply in digital life? Simple, email validations. We do lots of email validations, but we never recognize this is a part we really should consider. That good email validation or good validation of a product makes them very easy to use. So email validation is an example of constraints. What are some other types of constraints? So we do copy and paste a lot, right? So, while copying and pasting, have you ever been able to paste without copying? I don't know, because if you are not copied, what do you paste? So the copy, uh, the paste button will always become invisible and they are giving you a constraint that you cannot use until you copy something. So this is a good example of constraint. The next thing is mapping. So mapping, what is mapping? So mapping is relationship between controls and their movements the real world. I'll give an example. We all have phones, right? And we sometimes press the volume up button or down button to increase or decrease the level of sound. Think about one second that you are pressing the upper button and the volume is going down. Is it not confusing? You are pressing up but the volume is going down. So this is the relationship between controls and their real life interpretation. So they work, they have to be mapped so your users do not get confused. They should be able to perform their real life tasks both in real life and digital life as including their train to. If you do something out of the box that is not their train to or this is not including, they have to go through a trial and learn to learn that, that is not a good product design. So the last principle is consistency. Consistency can be many things like 
consistency in product design, consistency in branding, consistency in uh, other cases. So here is an example. In macOS, when you are opening an application, the controls are always on the top. For every application, the controls are always on the top. So what it does, it helps you to control the application from one universal space. By opening an application, you instantly know the controls are on the top. So this is a good consistency. So traffic lights, universal. In Kochi, in Dhaka, in Bangladesh, in USA, in New York, the meanings are always same. So this is a consistency we are trying to achieve. Whoever uses Windows 8, use Windows 8. Did you like it? Why didn't you like it? Because it was not consistent within the server. It was hard to use. There was a learning curve and there was so much confusion. So when you are building something that is not consistent to your user base, your users will not going to accept it. And companies like Microsoft had to pay for it. So that goes the five examples, uh, five principles of user uh, HPI. So we worked a lot today in user experience design, uh, making good product using you get user experience, making sure that the user gets the five rights, the user gets to do something more than right. So user experience design or UX is kind of an emanation of HPI. It's a sub part of it. It works with a broad range of topics. So I will show you some basic mistakes that we make easily in digital life. For example, we use form elements that has multiple columns. As a user, this is confusing because our mind wants to read things that put the least amount of pressure on our brain. So when you are applying two columns, I have to look this way and that way, this way and that way. This makes me a jarring experience and this is not a good practice. So you should always put the buttons in one vertical line. And this experiment was done by Google research team and they have an uh, they have a blog with more details about it. And the same blog tries to say you that whenever you will be using with multiple check boxes, you should always align them in one way. So the check boxes are always aligned in the right way. So it is easier for users to check off or check the items. So it is easier. The, and this experiment was also done by Google and they have their uh, more details on their web pages. And this was something I was working about in Widget. And I was taking input data about WordPress plugins. And I had plugin name, plug, plugin version, page version, and so many things. So I thought about why not just eliminating it? The plugins are already on WordPress I thought, let's test the plugin and pull the plugin data. So by applying that method, I have saved three minutes of each user's life. So this is how you can make better design to serve your users. So basically, we have so many things to talk about on HK, but there's a time constraint. So when you're designing a website or designing an application, a user doesn't really care about all this stuff. In the left picture, what we design, in the right picture, what a user needs. Because the user only sees those particular areas which they feel they need. They don't go through the all the lines and pages and do the small things you do with design. They get the important stuff. Think about Facebook. What do you do? You talk, you tap the notification icon all the time. Because that is the most important part of using your Facebook experience. So that is the way you can make critical decisions that what items you should put at what places. So there are basically more uh, thousands of uh, uh, subtopics in HCI, color psychology, mental model, speech law, digital principles, and thousands more. Uh, I don't have that much time, so I'm going to skip some of it. So, uh, can you tell me uh, what is the number written here? 3 lakh, 30 lakh. Yeah. 300 million, that's what I guess. Think about that, we have like 60 people around here and how many of you have got the right answer in the first time? And some of you are still calculating. What is this 
because we cannot process that much big amount of data in one second. We need time. So our mind always expects pictorial representation. So this is not 300 million, 30 million compared to one lakh. One lakh we can comprehend. 100,000 rupees, 100 times, 1,000 notes. We can imagine the map money in our hands or in physical world. But when it goes too much, you cannot process the, how much money this is actually. How much money actually 300 million? How, how much money actually 600 million? So, visible energy or pictorial representations are always going to help your users. So, that's, I guess, it. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. I'm, I'm sorry.